All right. For those who are watching, tuning in on YouTube, this is part five of our off-season discussion. And we're going to be talking about uh, a little bit of a, a spicy transaction because it was Matsu Joseph, who has two years remaining at $2.95 million, going to St. Louis along with Ottawa's 2025 third-round pick for the infamous one and only, the man, the myth, the legend, future considerations. So uh, bingo card. <laughs> so uh, this one, uh, I'm going to kick this one off. For me, this one was uh, a little surprising, not going to lie. I think Joseph had a good season. He's a guy you can play in a defensive role on your PK. He was one of Ottawa's best PK uh, players this past season. Um, you know, I really didn't think that Ottawa would have to give up an asset to trade him. I really thought that a team out there would see the player that he is and be more than happy to give up, say, a third round pick to acquire him. But maybe my hunch is that Ottawa was under pressure to get Pinto signed, especially with the rumors out there that his camp might ask for a trade or another team might try to go for the offer sheet route. Uh, now, whether that was an app, like an actual consideration, not by other teams, who knows, but um, nonetheless, Ottawa gave up a third round pick to send him to the blues. And I think that's a great pickup for the blues to give up no assets to bring in Joseph and uh, get a third round pick as well. Like I think a solid bit of business for the blues and for Ottawa, I guess they had a different preference on which they where they wanted to go, um, but they had the cap space to keep Joseph for this season. And I guess it just maybe not a Travis Green player, not a Steve Stales player, not really sure, but uh, he's out the door. So um, I'll throw this one to Bennett first. And what did you think about uh, Joseph being shipped out? I think it was extremely strange, to be honest. Uh, I really didn't get the impression that this was a player that had to be moved. Um, I think there was talk last year that he had to be moved in order to sign Pinto, but that wasn't really the case this year. I, I recognize we're just like jumping ahead slightly, but we did sign Pinto and for a value that we would have been able to maintain while having Joseph on the books. So I'm really not entirely sure why they decided to move him. I recognize that Matthew Joseph is not a world beater, but he did have 11 goals and 35 points last year, which was good for eights on an admittedly very bad team. But he at times looked pretty good playing in a third line role, sometimes jumping up and playing a little bit higher minutes. He has speed. He has a respectable amount of skill. I Again, one of those players where Matthew Joseph was certainly not and certainly was not the problem on the Senators last year. And if you're giving up assets to move a player and his contract, usually it has to be because they were actively making your team worse. And I don't really see that with Joseph. Uh, I understand that there were parts of the season where he was largely anonymous, but I also think that's sort of expected when you're a third or fourth line guy. You know, if Brady to check went missing for 30 games and scored no points, that would be a serious problem because he's one of the highest paid players on the team and we're paying him to be a consistent elite level performer. Um, we weren't paying Joseph that much. He was making, um, he's no longer on cap friendly because we traded him. So I don't have the number. <laughs> 2.95 mil. Two, like, yeah, like around 3 million. And I think that, 3 million for a guy that put up 35 points and was an effective penalty killer is not terrible. Um, yeah. I Anyway, I think... And of course, the, the reason I'm reacting this way, in case it wasn't obvious, is because we had to move a pick to get another team to take him. And I think that's a rather drastic measure that you usually reserve for things like offloading a Corpus Allo contract or offloading a Zaitsev contract. You know, actual anchors that major team worse every time they stepped on the ice joseph is not that player and that's why i find it pretty odd that we decided to essentially you know give up assets to get this guy off the books especially because it did not have an impact on whether or not we'd be able to sign pinto so i think this is a head scratcher for me and i really don't have much else to say 
Yeah, yeah. I I kind of look at it uh, in a similar light to Detroit uh, with Jake Wallman. Um, but even still, like that is a much more head scratchery type deal, uh, especially considering that Jake Wallman has quite a bit of trade value, in my opinion. Um, but, you know, I kind of look at this as a, you know, you're taking on a player who had almost 40 points last year is a consistently solid penalty killer um, plays a lot of different roles um, is, is versatile and you couldn't just give him away. Like, so the assumption here is, is that even if you put him on waivers, nobody would pick him up. And that, that just seems wrong to me. Like that doesn't make sense at all. Joseph had a career year last year too. Yeah. 35 points is actually the most he scored in his career. Yeah. And not only that, he had over a hundred hits and he had uh, nearly double the number of takeaways that he had giveaways. So it's not like this is a guy who's a soft perimeter player. He's a guy who obviously is valuable at stealing pucks. He's a threat shorthanded. He hits, so he doesn't shy away from contact. He blocks shots. Like, I don't I don't really know. And he's over six feet because that matters for the Sens. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, it, it's a guy who fits everything the Sens are looking for. He obviously was well-liked in the room. He was best friends with Shabbat. Ottawa loves yep. their best friend duos. Yep. Um, like they played junior together. Uh, you know, he really, I, I got to speak with him actually at the, um, what do you call it? Red carpet event that they do every year. And uh, he's really nice guy. And it's just unfortunate that this is the rep they went. We have the cap space to keep them. My, my only thought process is that they're in negotiations with another free agent winger who they like. Yeah who they want to bring in and needed that extra cap flexibility. Um, Plus, I mean, right now they have two NHL left-hand defensemen with Shabbat and Sanderson. Now that Brandstrom's gone, like, I don't know. If they think Tyler Clevin is the answer there on the third pairing, then cool. But my hunch is that they'll look to bring in another depth defenseman to potentially cover in case Clevin's not ready. Uh, Because I really doubt they're going to run a Hamnick JVD bottom pairing. I just don't see that happening. Uh, so anyway, all that to say, I, I, there must be something else coming if they didn't sign Joseph, like maybe Sprong or maybe Roslovich, like a guy like that that they're looking at. I don't know. We'll we'll have to see where they where they go. But um, it was just interesting to me that, like Bennett said, you had to give up another asset yeah. for a guy who just had a career year and is a very good defense forward and not old too. He still yeah. has a lot of good years ahead of him. So Yeah. I, I think that if there isn't a move that materializes out of this that immediately explains why we desperately did that desperately needed that cap space, then I think this was extremely boneheaded. But I, yeah. you sort of have to assume that that's the case. Yeah. It, if not, I mean like this is such a bizarre move to make if you didn't have something in the chamber yeah. that you sort of have to assume that you do, because if you didn't, like, why on earth would you trade a reasonably effective third liner for future considerations and give up a pick to do it? It's just bizarre. Well, it's it's because they asked for a fourth, but uh, we didn't have one. So, uh, all right, Pierre, yeah. get off the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 and like, I'll, I'll say this in closing, like, I imagine I I thought they were freeing up space to sign Shane Pinto. And uh, as we're going to talk about shortly, they signed Shane Pinto. But considering the cap space, they could have kept it. So uh, what's going on? 